Mr. Samuel Siandege, Deputy Inspector General of Police, Special Duties, State House. I, Fano Siandenge, having been appointed Deputy Inspector General of Police, do swear that I will well serve the Republic and the President of Zambia, that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the President and the Republic of Zambia, that I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of Zambia as by law established, and that I will not directly or indirectly reveal or transmit any such information or matter as shall be brought under my consideration or shall be made known to me by reason of my office, except as may be required in the discharge of my duties as such or with authority of the present. So help me God. I, Fano Siandenge, do swear and that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the President of the Republic of Zambia and that I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of Zambia as by law established. So help me God. or matter I will not directly and and that's why at the inauguration bearing in colleagues like these that they have a duty to the nation they have a duty we have a duty to the people of Zambia and that's paramount to everything we do. Everything that we decide upon, we must always remember how does this decision help better the lives of the people of Zambia. Sometimes it's easy to forget your Commissioner General of Police, sorry in this case, Commissioner General of Prisons, Deputy Commissioner General or Inspector General of Police, and other colleagues to believe that now you have the power to do what you like. That is not true. What you have is an opportunity to save the people, not the power to do what you like. And that's why at the inauguration ceremony at Hero Stadium, I was categorical and said that I do not want us to use the phraseology that this is a change of power from those living to us. No. The power belongs to the people. It is a change of leadership for service. And I extend that message to my four colleagues that you have a rare opportunity to serve the people of Zambia. With distinction, they have suffered enough. Already, the few measures that were put in place, we've announced, Zambians are 
on average across the country saying freedom is here, independence is here. I guess you hear them say so in the communities. It means they were not free. Now they have the freedom. Some are saying new dawn, opportunities abound. Can we make sure that that feeling the citizens have is reinforced by your appointment, your swearing in, in this hall. So always remember, we are here. So always remember, we are here for the people of Zambia. When we make mistakes, it will be clear. If it's not clear to us, someone will point to us that we've made a mistake. And we should be willing to correct that mistake and come back in line line to save the people, people of Zambia. Let me be deliberate and talk around my two colleagues in the correctional services. I'm a graduate of that institution and I'm fully aware of what goes on in those institutions. They are supposed to be correctional facilities. At the moment, they are not. They harden us detainees the conditions there harden us, the detainees. As a former detainee myself, I send a message to you that your selection was careful, very careful, in line with our theme to reunite this country, and this will become a common story at almost every swearing-in ceremony. So we can depart from the days of exclusions to days of inclusion. But more importantly for you to work towards making those facilities a truly correctional facilities. What am I saying? I am saying let's decongest those places. I shall repeat. Let us decongest those facilities. A cell meant for a cell meant for 10, 15 people, as a graduate there, I know that in a cell meant for 20 people, there were 170 of us. It's night time, you're supposed to go to sleep. There's no sleeping there because one leg of your colleague is here, something else is on your face from your next door neighbor. That is inhuman. That is not acceptable. The easy answer to such a comment is that the cells are limited. Let's be innovative. Let's think outside the box. When we were swearing in the police command, I said, do not arrest people before investigation. Because some of the people in those cramped areas are not criminals at all but they are congesting the areas. Start, starting with the police, I said it already. I don't want to repeat. Only those that have crimes must be arrested after investigation. Arrest, give bond. Deputy Inspector General of Police. I said this to your colleagues, please. Give bond. If the matter is bonded, instantly. Take people to court in 48 hours, as the law says. When they're in court, we shall address the judiciary. Time will come for us to address the judiciary. Bail must be given. Just a memory rejig. But once you receive the colleagues in there, there are things you can do to decongest those correctional facilities. We, as a UPND, working with yourselves, we will talk, we will sit around the table and agree how we can do that. But that recommendation should come from yourselves, because you know those facilities. Recommend what you think is wrong to decongest what we need to do to feed the people. Those are human beings. They must eat. Some of them have no relatives arrested in Chama, brought to Lusaka.
No relative. They must eat. You have farms, you grow food. Just look at these issues. They must have blankets, vice president, secretary of the cabinet. Blankets must be available for our inmates. Mattresses must be available. That's not punishment. That's hardening people in there. Sleeping on the floor for five years. When such a person comes out, you think you can scare them? They'll run you down. So we're hardening people in there. Money is there. Yes, the treasure is empty, but we can save money from corruption, from expensive roads, from buying non-functional ambulances, fire tenders, so to say, and divert that money to these colleagues. Ventilation does not need a lot of money. Let's ventilate those facilities. Cutting a window, I'm sure the Vice President and I can donate cutting discs and, you know, whatever. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Let's care for the people of Zambia. I never knew that I would end up in maximum prison. And Deputy Commissioner General Waria, he's a young man, we met in those circumstances. He was my boss. Under difficult conditions and quite oppressive regime, he tried very hard to act professionally. He knows what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Chakawa knows what I'm talking about. And I looked at say, this young man. How is he managing to stay reasonable in an environment like this? He was my boss. I was a bit naughty sometimes because I, I did not accept certain instructions, which I thought were against my human rights. But we got along in a very strange way. He was my boss. Today, he's being sworn in by one of his detainees. Life goes round. And if we all the time we are saving people to the best of our ability, we'll be fine. And it will be noticeable. There he is. I never told him. He got a message this morning that he'll be Deputy Commissioner General. I don't know how he felt, but it's how he acted when he was fully in charge, professional, to the best of his ability. I think that's the message I'm delivering. For the colleague, Deputy Inspector General of Police, you know what you've gone through. The nation knows what you've gone through. You're not coming back to punish those who treated you like that, no. You are coming back to show them that you are a better person, that you occupy a higher moral ground than those that persecuted you. I think the story is told. People of Zambia, let's support each other, let's work together. Journalists have a role to play. They must be protected when they come to State House by you, Deputy Inspector General of Police. Today they're journalists, tomorrow they'll be presidents, one of them. One of them, May. Life goes round, but if we act professionally, enforce law and order within the confines of the law, you'll be okay. I said to your colleagues last time, we cannot use tear gases on our people willy-nilly. Harmless people, harmless people, tear gas, live bullets, no, no. But I'm not saying you should not maintain law and order. I'm not saying criminals must not be brought to book. They should and they will, but do it professionally. Soon we'll be talking about law oversight institutions, Anti-Corruption Commission, Drug Enforcement Commission, 
Financial Intelligence Center. They too have to do their job. Someone misunderstood the message I've given to mean that I have done a deal with those who took people's money. It's a deliberate distortion. Citizens' money must come back to the owners, the citizens. Full stop. But that's not my job. That's the job of those colleagues. I think, Vice President, I deliberately reinforce this message so that we can provide leadership to bring life back to normal in our country. Don't steal from the people. Even the new colleagues, in a few days, will be announcing ministers. And you'll be very happy. You'll be very happy. You will agree with me it was worth waiting for. Looking at different things. They should not say the shoes of those who were there before us, the corrupt, are bad. They throw them in the bin. In the night, they go and pick them. Tomorrow, they're wearing the same shoes. No. No, 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 no. That's not what we're saying. Corruption is corruption. Stealing from the people is stealing from the people. But our main interest is to return the money to the owners, the people of Zambia, so they can have water, so they can have food, so they can have those things. I thought I needed to clarify this, Vice President, because I'm listening a lot. I like hearing what social media is saying, what other people are saying. I hope this makes the point clear. With that, it's late in the day. Thank you to the team organizing these events. Very soon we'll be about to close. We'll be closing because we have to set on with the business of running the country for the people. So we'll finish this phase by and large, largely. And the next time we meet in a different environment with the journalists, Secretary of the Cabinet will like questions. In that situation, we'll like questions. Anton Bwalia, arrange for me an open radio program where citizens will be calling openly, without restriction, without threats, to demonstrate the new dawn that citizens can ask any question they want. We will work hard to answer it. If we can't answer it, we'll pass it to her. We'll pass it to somebody. Let's demonstrate what we're saying, not just to these men, the women last time, but to ourselves to lead by example. We committed to voters that will be talking to citizens once in a while on an open line. And no one will visit you after you ask a question, whatever question. The onus is on you to ask a decent question. It's on you, it's not on us. But you will ask a question, no one will phone you again to say, why did you ask that question? You are free. It's a new dawn, Freedom Day. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the word is very clear. Those new responding, their performance will be measured against the standard day. We are going to have uh, the voting national anthem. And afterwards, if you see Mr. President, we invite those new responding for a future session. Stand dancing of Zambia, proud and free. The hand of wake and joy in unity. Lead us in the struggle for the right. We